is the place. Amen. So thankful for His grace. What a God. What a Savior. Take your Bible this morning. Let's go to Joshua. You'll find it in the beginning of your Old Testament. And I want you to find the book of Joshua. And when you get there, find chapter 3. And stand up with us, if you will, if you're able. And you don't have to, but I invite you to. Stand up and go to Joshua chapter 3. And we're going to read a couple of verses today. And then I'll pray, let you be seated. And I'll give you the content that the Lord has been working in my heart for the last two and a half weeks. If you're in Joshua chapter 3, let me hear you say amen. Amen. Let's begin reading in verse number 7. The Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, this is important, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. Look in verse 11. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, when they shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above. And they shall stand upon an heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the Lord, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. Now here's a little side note, a historical fact. For Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city of Adam that is beside Zaratan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, watch, stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over, how? on dry ground until all the people, and I like this, were passed clean over Jordan. Dear Lord, open up our heart. Open up this word. Change our lives today. May we wrap who we are around the word of God. And may we leave here confident that he who has been with Moses and was with Joshua is with us today. I love you and I praise you in Jesus' beautiful name. And all of God's people said, Amen. You can be seated. We began last week out of Joshua chapter 3. And Joshua made this statement and said, For the Lord will do wonders among us. The word wonders there, it speaks of miracles. Things that could not happen outside of the intervening hand of God. Now, may I ask you this morning, is there anybody here today that needs God to do something in your life that you cannot do for yourself? I need God to work a wonder in my life. I need God to move on my behalf so that something that would not happen will happen. Joshua said... The Lord is going to do wonders among us. Now, that is an interesting word in itself, and we'll look at that in just a moment. But he said God wants to do wonders among us. 
You remember that Joshua is the man following the ministry of Moses. Moses had been their leader for 40 years. Moses in his ministry was accredited with 42 miracles. 42 times that God did the impossible through the life of Moses. But I want to make a statement right here and I want you to listen very carefully. They had 42 miracles but they were still wandering in the wilderness. 42 miracles and they were nowhere near where God wanted them to be. Is it possible that God can do wonders in our lives and yet we see no progress in our walk with Him? Sometimes I look back, and I'm going to need an amen right here. I look back and I realize that I have been a bad steward of the wonders of God in my life. I have not lived up to his investment into my life. He's been so good to me. He's intervened time and time again. He's worked when I had no ability to fix it. He has saved me more than just from hell. He has saved me from situations and from suffering and from heartache and from pain and from peril. But yet for all of his miracles in my life, I have not done with them what I should have done. That's just honest right there. I should be a lot further down the road and even though God has worked wonders, I have not used them to the greatest of my abilities. So 42 miracles and they're still just wandering around with no home, without the fulfillment of God's promise to enter into Canaan. Joshua said the Lord will do wonders and this is our entirety of our line of thinking for this Sunday and the following two, we see that Joshua only worked, count them, three miracles in the Word of God. But in Joshua's three miracles, he takes them further and accomplishes more in three miracles than Moses did in 42 miracles. And here's the reason for that. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this little sermon already. The reason for that is all of Moses' miracles was a Vegas-style show. It was a pull up a seat and watch the performance. And the people sat down and Moses stood up. They watched and Moses did the wonders. They took it in and God poured it out. But when Joshua comes along, He said there's going to be a little bit of a difference in these miracles because you're no longer going to sit back and watch. You are going to have to work while God does wonders. Amen. There's going to be some war happening while God does wonders. And I'm afraid that too many of us have gotten accustomed to sitting back and watching God work. And it may be time that we get in the war and while we are battling, God blesses. While we are in the mess of our situation, God turns it into a miracle. And so I want to say to somebody today, every one of us can testify that God has worked in our life up until now. But now we are not going to expect God to work for us. We want God to work with us. And if God is working with us and not for us, He can do more in three wonders than He did in 42 when we were uninvolved. If I thought y'all would do it, I'd tell you to turn to your neighbor and say, get to work. God wants to work a wonder. And He does. But it will require our involvement. I want to show you some things about these, this first miracle. This is a miracle of transition. This is so important because they have been in the wilderness and God is wanting to take them into the promised land. But the Jordan River stands between them and their destiny. And so God is taking them through transition. When they move from one location to another, and I dare say this morning that there are people here right now 
that are standing in a place of transition where you need God to intervene on your behalf. Can I get an amen right there? And isn't it amazing, isn't it amazing that life is full of transition? And just about the time you get the hang of it, it changes and you've got to learn how to do something else another way. Life is full of transition. It doesn't matter if you're here and you're single. It doesn't matter if you are newly married or if you have young children or if yours are on their way into adulthood or if you are a grandparent or a great-grandparent. Every one of us can testify that seemingly every year of our life and every stage of our life is a period of transition where we are leaving one thing and we are entering into something else. And so I've come to tell you that there is a miracle available in times of transition. Let me give you three truths this morning. Number one, notice this. In order to experience God's miraculous help in their time of transition, we see first of all, they became one with the presence of of the Lord. I want to say that again. They had to become one with the presence of the Lord. Can I go on and preach a minute right here? If this is the only time you talk to God, you're not talking to Him nearly enough. If this is the only time you worship, then you're not worshiping Him nearly enough. If this is the only time your Bible is opened, then you're not making enough progress. If the only thing you hear from God is what the preacher said last service, then you're not hearing from God enough. There must be a point in our life where we become one with the presence of the Lord. I want to say thank God for church. I love Sunday morning. I love Thursday night. I love revival. But honey, I don't have to be in church in order to have church. I have found out he'll show up in my truck riding down the road. I have found out that he is available on the side of my bed when I kneel and pray. He's in the living room when I turn the couch into an altar. And no matter where we go, we have the ability to be at one with the presence of the Lord. Now, Joshua said, and it's important, I think it's verse 5, I'm not sure, but he said the Lord will do wonders where? Among you. So that's where God wants to move, is among you. And I want you to notice, and I, I just want to touch on these, I don't have time to preach every one of them, but I want you to notice all of the times where the ark of God is mentioned in this text. Now look at me right here. The ark of God was the tangible presence of God. That ark is where God chose to rest His presence. When the tabernacle was built, that ark sat in the Holy of Holies. It was where God literally sat down. Now, when they say that the ark is going, this means God is going. Look in chapter 3. We'll just touch a couple of these verses. Look in verse 6. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant. Look in verse 8. And thou shalt command the priest that bear the ark of the covenant. Look in verse 10. And Joshua said, Hereby shall you know that the living God is among us. Verse 11, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord passeth before you. Look in verse 13. And the middle of the verse, And the priest that bear the ark of the Lord. Verse number 14, the end of it. And the priest bearing the ark of the covenant. Verse 15, And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan. And again in verse 17, and the priest that bear the ark of the covenant. Ladies and gentlemen, when they crossed over Jordan, they were not going by themselves, but they were going with the presence of the Lord. 
And so I want to say this as plain as I know how. Glory, hallelujah. You can make it from here to there if God is going with you. I don't know where here is and I don't know where there is, but I know one thing, wherever it is, you can make it if you're one with the presence of God. You can become a family if God goes with you. You can raise young children if God goes with you. You can help your children move into adulthood if God goes with you. You can live in an empty nest if God goes with you. You can transition through the death of a spouse if God goes with you. You can let your hair turn gray and memories fade if God goes with you. And today we'll have two families in our church that will walk by the grave and they'll deposit resurrection seeds and they'll say their last goodbyes. But thank God you can do it if God goes with you. Hallelujah. I'm sorry if I get a little loud. That just fires me up. Because I've been a lot of places where I didn't know how I was going to make it. But thank God, if we are one with the presence of the Lord, we can make it through transitional times. That's amazing that the presence of God had become one with the moving of the people. Somebody help me right here. I'll go anywhere if he's going. But I don't want to go nowhere if he's not moving. Now, I mentioned a while ago, and I'd be doing a disservice to not touch verse 5 and verse 10. He said, the Lord will do wonders among you. Then verse 10, he said, you shall know that the living God is among you. Then I want you to notice that there is another place in our text that the Bible tells us the reason that the waters stood up because the Lord was in them. Verse 13, And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. Why did they stand? Because God was in the waters with them. Aren't you glad that God does not Oh, hallelujah. He does not send us into trouble and he does not stand on the other side and beckon us out of trouble. But thank God, in transition, he walks in with us. He is there while we're in it and he steps out on the other side right beside us. I heard about a new grandfather that went to visit his grandson. When he got there, his mama, his daughter, the baby's mama, said he's in trouble and said he's in the playpen, said he's not allowed to come out because he's in trouble. Said, don't you go in there and get him out, neither. How many of you know that when you start raising your children, you then have to start disciplining your own parents? Can I get an amen? They just need a whipping. I mean, let's be honest. Most grandparents are out of control. She said, don't you go in there and get him out, neither. He said, I won't. Said, I'll just go see him. A few minutes, she heard him laughing, playing, having a... She said, I can't... She walked back there, and he kept his word. He didn't get the baby out. He was in the playpen with the baby. And he said, you told me not to get him out. You didn't say I couldn't get in with him. You know what God does for us? He doesn't always get us out of trouble. But thank God, he'll go right into trouble with us. And when we become one with his presence, and I want you to get this, you can have his presence in your cubicle. You can have his presence at your desk. You can have his presence driving nails and turning wrenches and making estimates. It doesn't matter where you are or what you do. You can become one with the presence of the Lord. And if you're going to make a right transition You'd better do that. Somebody say amen. Man, I'm enjoying this. Number two, not only did they have to become one with the presence of the Lord, but I like this. Number two, they had to get their feet wet. (laughs) You know, let's look at the scripture. I'll say what I want to say. Look, Look at verse number eight. Verse number eight. 
And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan. Look in verse number 13. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the Lord shall rest in the waters. Verse 15. And as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan and the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. Three times the Lord said, I'm going to move, but I'm not moving until you get your feet wet. And I wonder how many times, oh, y'all need to get honest and help me right here. How many times have we stood on the brim Have we stood on the brink? Those are Bible words. We just read them. And have we waited on God to move? And God said, while you're waiting on me, I'm waiting on you. Get your feet wet. Step in. It ain't dry right now, but if you'll move, I'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Now you remember, look at me right here. They had crossed water before. It was Moses that led them out of Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea. When Moses brought them to the crossing of the Red Sea, Moses said, all right, y'all, pull up a chair. The miracle show is about to begin. And he took that rod, and he stuck it out over the water. And before he ever got his toes in the water, before they ever made a move into that sea, God made the water stand up at attention. And I believe that God even pulled the moisture out of that that bed of of dirt, that, that, that seed bed. I don't know if you've ever been at a lake or a pond when it is run dry, but even for months and years, that water, that ground is so saturated, you'll bury up to your knees, you'll sink in it and won't be able to get out of it. But let me tell you something, honey, when God, hey, glory, when God pulled the water out of the Red Sea, they didn't stomp through in mud, they didn't drag through in moist ground. Thank God it was dry from one end all the way to the other. I believe that. Moses sticks that rod out. The water is gone. God evaporated it. It was dry ground. And they said, that was awesome. Let's go. Y'all get up. Moses has done it again. But Joshua said, let me tell you how this is going to work this time. (laughs) There ain't going to be no rod show. There's no magic wand. Here's how this works. Get your feet wet. Step on in. And when you get your feet wet, then God will begin to work wonders on our behalf. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel faith just building in here this morning. God does not do His works and then invite us to reap the benefits, but God will tell us, step out. I know it's wet right now. I know it's an incrossable river right now, but get your feet wet. Step in, and when you go forward, I'll do what only I can do. You ever got a word from God? And you knew what you're supposed to do, but you was on the brim, standing on the brink, and it was terrifying because it seemed like it was an impossibility. But I found out that just like Joshua, when you step out and get glory and get your feet in the water, faith will activate the wonder-working power of God. You know what we want? We want the trail clean, clear, dry, and marked before we ever even load up the tent. But Joshua said, step in. And when you step in and your feet get wet, then God will begin to work. I wonder who's here today standing on the edge of the wonder-working power of God. God wants to save your family God wants to revolutionize your home. And let me just throw this in here. A happy Christian home should not be the exception. That should be the rule. If it is constant turmoil at your house, something ain't right. If it is constant bickering and fighting, then something's out of line. And God wants to move in your family. God wants to move in your home. And you're standing on the brink of it. I say glory, step out and watch God work in your family. 
somebody wants to start a business, but it looks impossible, step out and say, Lord, I'll, I'll step, and I know when I step that you'll move on my behalf. Somebody wants to make a move of faith in your family and rearrange your financial situation and, and maybe mama needs to stay home with the children and maybe daddy needs to make a transition to another job or maybe mom needs to take a raise in an advancement and you don't know how all of this is going to work out. Listen to me. Go back to point one. Is God in the middle of it? Is God moving in your life? Is God in the center of your world? And if he is, step out, step out step out and watch God do wonders when our feet get wet. <laughs> when our feet get wet. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that we're afraid to get our feet wet with God but we like to drown doing it our own way? Some of y'all drowning in here right now and I'm a preacher. I wouldn't make a good lifeguard because if somebody was drowning and they raised their hand, I'd say, I see that hand. Is there another? Somebody else? Is there another? Come on. But some of you are drowning in here this morning. You're drowning financially. You're drowning in your relationship. You're drowning in worry. You're drowning in anxiety. You're drowning in debt. And you are struggling, drowning. And God says, take a step. And you're more afraid of that wet step than you are drowning under your own power. Get God in the middle and say, Lord, I wouldn't do this except I know you're in it and I'm going to step out into my Jordan and I'm going to watch you dry it up and make a way where it seems like there's no way. Y'all preaching me to death this morning. I feel sorry for the 11. They ain't getting nothing but leftovers. Y'all help me right there. They had to get their feet wet and then number three, I'll show you this one, I'll hush. Glory. Number three, I want you to see the last verse, verse number 17. I like this. And the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, here it is, stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. Number three, in times of transition, they had to stand firm. They had to stand firm. You know, God sent the priest and the Levites out into the middle of the Jordan. And they are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Now watch this. This is a time when the river was flooded. Now I got, I got, I got winter pool faith. Can I get an amen right there? You know, when the lake's down, hallelujah, God, I believe you can work a miracle. But this is not winter pool level. This is time of harvest. This is when the sea is backwashing into the Jordan. This is when the rains have flooded every creek, every ditch, every drainage. And now the Jordan is at overflowing. That's when God begins to work. When it looks the hardest, that's when God does His best work. They walk into this Jordan River. God stands the waters up and watch. Here's what they had to do. They had to stand firm in the middle of that miracle. Now that's real easy for us to read and say, well, that's nice. But ladies and gentlemen, there are walls of water standing on both sides. Death is imminent if that water was to recede back into its original place. But thank God, with fear on every side, they stood firm in the middle of that place of transition. You know what's so hard about this? Brother Jerry, I want you to come. You can leave that going. We'll edit it later. But let me say this because this is so important. I want you to get this. You know what is so hard about standing in the middle of the Jordan? They're watching everyone else go to the other side. But yet they have to stand and hold their ground and stand firm in the middle of that Jordan River. And in life, it is so difficult sometimes to watch other people move on while you're still having to live by faith. It's tough to watch them reach the other side and your shoulders are tired and your back is aching and your legs are trembling, but yet God has asked you to stand firm. But you know what the Lord showed me? They had to stand firm. Hallelujah. 
They had to stand firm so others could make it through. And mom and daddy, we get tired sometimes, don't we? But we've got to stand firm in times of transition so others can make it to the other side. There's some gray hairs in here. And I want to tell you something. I I know a lot of churches are trying to reach young people and they're trying to reach uh, millennials and young families. But you know what I read in the Bible? I didn't read in the Bible where he told us to go after any one section of people. He just said, go ye into all the world. And I want to say something. If, if you have, and, I, and it's always tough to, tell, to just say people are old without saying they're old. Can I get an amen right there? But let me say it here, here. I'm going to say it in a real nice way. If you have been seasoned with life, come on somebody, I ought to run for president. That is as political as it gets. And if you have got some years of experience under your belt, let me tell you something, honey, you welcome a greater life. Because we need you standing for us because you've seen some things that'll help us get to the other side. You know what I found out about people that's got some gray hair and they've lived a while, they don't freak out when everybody else freaks out. (laughs) Young people blow up, get mad, gonna straighten everybody out and they're gonna fix everybody and they demand. And I've learned that people that's lived a while, they'll just stand in the Jordan and say, we're gonna make it through this. It's gonna be all right. God brought us here and God will bring us out. Y'all go on and we'll stand firm in times of transition. And so I want to say praise God this morning. Keep on standing. <laughs> you know, this is their miracle came down to them just being willing to take a stand. Just being willing to stand. He said, go stand in the Jordan and I'll keep it dry. And all they did was stand. But while they stood, whoo, glory. While they stood, God was moving. And while they were holding tight, God was on the go. But they had to stand. Somebody needs to stand in your home. You need to stand in your marriage. You need to stand in your job. You need to stand on behalf of your spouse. You need to stand strong. You've been fighting temptation. Stand. And while you're standing, God is working on your behalf. I'm going to tell you right now, If that message right there don't give you enough faith to charge hell with a water pistol, I don't know what to tell you. But God's going to do a work and He's going to do a work of wonder. But He's not going to do it with us sitting on the shore. He's going to do it when we step out and get our feet wet.